Welcome to the Sports Science Laboratory at Washington State University. My name is Lloyd Smith. I'm the director of the lab. We're standing inside of our batting cage that we use to measure the performance of bats and balls. These are some things that we test in our lab. This is a softball bat. This is a baseball bat. We've also tested cricket bats. And we've modified our test to test the performance of hockey sticks. In a few minutes, I'll take you through our lab to go through each of the steps that we use to measure the performance of bats and balls in our lab. When a bat comes into our lab, this is the first station that it stops at. There are a number of features of the bat besides performance that must be approved. We'll take the bat, for instance, and measure its diameter to ensure that it meets the correct diameter specifications and roundness. We've designed this fixture to measure the length of the bat. We put it here and slide this forward and we get an accurate measure of how long the bat is. The weight of the bat is also important. We have two scales that measure the weight of the bat and also a property which we call the balance point. We put the bat in the fixture in this way and we get two weights here. We use a formula then that then adds those weights to give us the total weight of the bat and also the balance point. The balance point is also called the center of gravity and you can find that approximately by balancing the bat on your finger like this. Once we have the weight and balance point of the bat, we can measure what we call the bat's moment of inertia. That's a measure of where the weight is on the bat. So a bat with most of its weight toward the end cap will swing slower and a bat with most of its weight in the knob will swing faster. This happens to be a very important property of the bat that has a strong effect on its performance. To measure this property, we put a clamp on the bat at a point that's six inches in from the end of the bat. We'll then put the bat in this fixture here that has two light gates. These light gates me measure the period of the bat as it oscillates back and forth. We'll push this back and allow the bat to oscillate back and forth. We'll then have a computer program that times this oscillation. From the time of that period, and knowing the weight properties of the bat, we can calculate the moment of inertia of the bat. The performance of the bat can be influenced by the properties of the ball. One way to control those properties or limit their variation is by controlling the temperature and humidity in the environment where the bats are tested. This past year we made a significant upgrade to our lab to improve our temperature and humidity control. This is the control panel right here that controls the temperature and humidity of our test chamber as well as recording our temperature and humidity. We'll now go into the test lab and show you how we test bats. This is our test lab. This shelf here is where we store our balls. You can see we have a large number of balls. They have to stay here for at least 14 days for them to have a uniform moisture content. After that, we'll take the balls and test them. An important property of the ball is its hardness. We measure that by putting it in a load frame like this and compressing the ball a quarter of an inch. The force that it's required to compress that quarter inch we call the ball compression. We have a computer here that controls a load frame and measures a ball compression. This is our air cannon that we use to test balls. This will be a softball that we'll fire here in just a minute, and this is a sabo. We call this a sabo style air cannon. The ball rests inside of the sabo. We load the cannon like this, and then the breech end of the cannon is closed. At the exit of the cannon, we have what's called an arrestor plate. This stops the sabo and allows the ball to travel forward. So the arrestor plate will come forward as the bow strikes it, the ball will pass through, and then the sabo will hit the arrestor plate and then fall down and catch in the net. After the ball passes through the arrestor plate, it comes through our light box. Here we have three light gates. These light gates measure the speed of the ball twice, once between the first two light gates and again between the second two light gates. The ball then continues on, it impacts our rigid wall and then rebounds back to the light gates again to measure the rebound speed of the ball. In the research that we've done here in the bat lab, we found that bat performance doesn't always correlate well with ball compression. 
We developed an improved test to measure the hardness of the ball. We call this dynamic stiffness. We use the air cannon here that I just demonstrated in doing the test, but the impact surface has been modified. In the ball dynamic stiffness test, the ball comes forward and impacts a solid steel cylinder and then rebounds back. The shape of the cylinder is similar to the shape of the bat, so that the deformation the ball sees is comparable to the deformation it would see in a bat. Between the cylinder and this rigid wall, we have an array of small load cells. They're able to measure the impact force. From the speed of the ball and the impact force, we're able to measure a stiffness of the ball. This is the program that we use to measure the ball dynamic stiffness. This is the force as a function of time. This peak force here is the force that we use when we compute the ball dynamic stiffness. Another property of the ball that's very important is its coefficient of restitution. We often call this the core of the ball, and most balls have that labeled right on the surface of the ball. The core of the ball and the hardness of the ball are independent properties. You can vary the hardness of the ball or compression or dynamic stiffness without changing its coefficient of restitution and vice versa. We measure the coefficient of restitution in a way that looks very similar to how we measure the ball dynamic stiffness. We use the ball air cannon as we did in the dynamic stiffness test, but now instead of having a cylindrical surface with a load cell, we have a rigid flat wall. So the ball comes in, hits the flat wall, and then rebounds back. The coefficient of restitution is simply the ratio of the outgoing ball speed to the incoming ball speed. Now we have the ball properties measured and we have the mass properties of the bat measured. It's time to measure the performance of the bat. This is our bat cannon. This is a Sabo style cannon just like our ball cannon was. We load the ball and Sabo in at the breech end as we did before at the ball test. And at the back end of the barrel, the arrestor plate catches the Sabo and allows the ball to pass through again. This is a light box of the bat cannon. It's very similar to what we use for the ball cannon. We have the same types of light gates that measure ball speed. The light gates are mounted vertically so that we have a better field of view of the ball rebounding off of the bat. The bat resides here right at the back of the light box and it's on a pivot so after the impact it can recoil back. This is the pivot of the bat. The shaft rests on low friction bearings and on the bottom of the shaft we have an optical encoder. That allows us to measure the bat speed after impact. A significant difference between what we do in the lab and what happens in the field is the motion of the bat. In our lab test, the bat is stationary before impact, but in a game the bat is being swung. We account for that by increasing the speed of the ball as it comes in toward the bat. In softball, for instance, a bat at the high level of play might swing at 85 miles an hour, and the pitch in the slow pitch game might come in at 25 miles an hour. Those two speeds add to 110 miles an hour. Since our bat is initially stationary, for softball, we'll fire the ball in at 110 miles an hour toward the bat, so that the relative speed between the bat and the ball are representative of what would occur in a game. If we had a baseball bat here, the speed might be 140 miles an hour, say to account for a 70 mile an hour bat speed and a 70 mile an hour pitch speed. This concludes our tour of the Sports Science Laboratory. We hope you enjoyed your visit and you found it informative.